On Bougainville Island, a patrol is coming down a jungle track back to the area held by American troops, Fijian scouts and New Zealand airmen. For 17 days in a jungle outpost, this patrol has been holding out against persistent Jap attacks. Now it's almost Easter and they've been relieved. But for them, there's no prospect of a few days off. This is no holiday spot. This is no scene on a Hollywood set. Here, trees smolder from the raking fire of shells and the stench of dead bodies fills the air. Last November, against fierce resistance, American troops forced a beachhead on Empress Augusta Bay below this hill. Since then, Jap garrisons, with their supplies cut off, have been fanatically hanging on back in the jungle. Thousands have been wiped out, thousands still remain. With artillery on both sides blasting away across this area, American colored troops, first of their kind to move up to a Pacific front line, dig in and settle down unconcerned. A few hundred yards away, men of the Royal New Zealand Air Force are also digging in. Continual shell fire overhead makes this no easy station. Despite conditions, planes must be kept tuned up to fighting pitch. To hold on to advanced places like this, our Air Force needs as many men as an Army division. For safety's sake, every man turns to digging foxholes and filling sandbags. No man here is too proud to go to work on the end of a shovel. In control of land, sea and air fighting on Bougainville is General Griswold. In consultation here, he plans fresh attacks. A battery goes into action as night approaches. Inside the gun post, men are busy. For them, one day or night is much the same as any other on Bougainville. It's just a matter of keeping on pounding away at Jap positions. Mathematics in the jungle, plotting on maps and charts with a precision that kills. An artillery barrage, 5,000 rounds, has smashed up a Jap infantry concentration on the banks of this river. Now there's a little clearing up to be done. We've seen more horrible pictures than these. Pictures of men, women and children of Nanking, slaughtered by the very same men whose bodies lie here this morning. Men of the 6th Japanese Imperial Division. Strung out along the edge of the battle area are Fijians, Pacific Islanders who are supreme experts in the art of Pacific War. Facing them at the moment, a few hundred yards away, is a Jap outpost. Their bullets whine overhead at any sign of movement. In charge of troop distribution here is a New Zealander, Lieutenant Colonel Upton of Auckland. Back of the perimeter, some of the Fijian boys are taking it easy, waiting for chow. These are the jungle fighters whose exploits have become legend throughout the Pacific. In two months on this island, they've lost only one man and killed 125 Japanese. At the moment, a mortar bomb carrier serves them as a card table. It's a way they've learnt of passing the time. Fighting alongside these boys are several New Zealanders. Sergeant Wilson, Captain Chivers, and Lieutenant Bendall. For these men, and for all others here, Easter means no change, no rest, no overtime, no profit, and the same two meals a day. With others coming in from a patrol comes one badly wounded, a Fijian injured by a Jap grenade. American doctors are ready with temporary dressings, but he's in need of more urgent treatment, and they give him a blood transfusion on the spot. Blood serum from an American donor goes to save a Fijian ally. He is rapidly transferred to a waiting ambulance. All this is happening in a battle area with the enemy only a mile away.
Now Fijian patrols, among them some Tongan boys, are getting ready to move off. And there are no absentees when they take on this job.